Wondering how you can turn one listing into multiple listings? We have the actual playbook today. I'm joined by Jimmy Mackin, the CEO and co-founder of Curator. This is one that will absolutely, I believe with all my heart, can take your business to the next level. All right, Jimmy, this is one that I have been uh, really excited for us to finally um, really kind of dive in and let people hear some of the great things that you're seeing, some of the things that you're doing at Curator, and really just get a good perspective of some agents. And when they get done with this interview, I know that I know they're going to have some action steps they can do that's going to generate some business. So um, if anybody doesn't know, uh, Jimmy Mackin, CEO, co-founder, Curator. Uh, Jimmy, if you don't mind, Let's go into specifically why marketing listings are so important right now and some of the things that you're seeing as far as opportunities. Well, uh, this is, this is going to be dubbed the, the Jimmy show here. Uh, so it's great to see you again, my friend. Um, you know, at, at a high level, you know, I, I always think about this this basic question, Jimmy, which is what's true today that that wasn't true maybe 12 months ago or 24 months ago. And I think when you when you analyze the market, we're coming off the back of this sort of boom where promoting your listings was was not even necessary because homes were selling before they even hit the market and in many many instances you know people the most agents definition of marketing a listing was you know pressing the the submit button when they're entering it into the MLS and right. so from my perspective you know now that the market has sort of stabilized and decelerated a bit i, I see that not as a problem but rather an opportunity which is really smart listing agents recognize one fundamental truth, which is a buyer is a paycheck. A listing is an asset. And if you can take a listing and you can turn that, and if you can execute the right strategies, which hopefully we'll be able to dive into here in a minute, take that listing, you can turn that listing into a few more opportunities on the buy side and certainly a few more opportunities on the sell side. So I think what's so exciting about this time that we're in right now is that the game has sort of slowed down and now we as it have an have an opportunity to use that not as a disadvantage but an advantage and so these assets that we have these listings that are hard to come by these listings can become another listing if we execute against the right strategies no jimmy it's so good i love the buyers of paycheck a listing is an asset. This and it's so true. Uh, the other what I see right now, and you, I think we may have even talked about this before, um, is literally right now any new agents that have been in the business less than four years, they don't understand what it is to market a place. And most of the agents that are experienced, even seasoned agents, there's so mm -hmm. much atrophy on the marketing side of listings yeah. Yeah. Um, that literally it has created an opportunity that I don't care if you're listening to this and you've never sold a place before and you got your first listing, or you've been doing this business for 25 years. Doing the things we're going to talk about will generate additional listings, which is so exciting. So let's get into some of the practical stuff. Let's start. Where would you start if you were looking at this as far as where that opportunity is? Well, the you know, I'll give you a, a, a small a small example of this, Jimmy, you sort of where to start. Um, in the early days of Ferrari, uh, Enzo Ferrari would have you know wealthy businessmen come to the factory in Italy. And he would give them a tour of the uh, of the, of the of the production line, show them the craftsmanship of building a Ferrari. And uh, inevitably, at the end of the tour, for a few hours, the businessman would always turn to Enzo Ferrari and say, "You know, Mr. Ferrari, I would love to buy one of these cars." And Enzo would reply, "Well, I, you know, unfortunately, I can't give you a Ferrari now. I can't sell you a Ferrari now. Maybe I can do something for you in six to twelve months." After doing one of these tours, one of his mechanics came up to Enzo and said, "Mr. You know, Enzo." Uh, why won't you sell these businessmen your Ferraris? We have a parking lot full of them. Why don't you just sell the Ferrari? And Enzo replied, a Ferrari has to be desired. Mm -hmm. And when I think about marketing for listings, a list, great marketing, you create desire, right? And so I get it. Some of you right now who are listening, you've got some Ferraris. Some of you got some Toyotas too. But we can still create some desirability around those uh, around those listings. So where would I start? I would start not where most people start, which is when a home hits the market or when a home is coming soon. But I would actually start, Jimmy, one step before that, which is when I book a listing appointment. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say you call me up and say, "Hey, I'm looking to maybe sell my house. I'm not sure what the homes, what my home is worth, and you know we're exploring all of our options. We might think about renting the property. Could you come by today at 5:30 to have a conversation? Okay, so you get a call from your SOI. It's one of those kind of one of the calls we love. Come, let's be call. 
at that exact moment, as a marketer, putting my marketing hat on, I'm sending an email to my database saying, I'm about to go on a listing appointment, or I'm about to go meet a potential seller. Now, in that email, I'm going to say, hey, based on the MLS guidelines, I can't share much about this because this person has not decided to list their property. But what I can say is this home is in a highly desirable neighborhood and homes just like this one, you know, sell quickly above ask price. If you'd like to get the details about this listing, when I'm able to share it with you, reply to this email right now. And so what I'm doing is I'm selling the idea of a listing. I'm not promoting a listing because I don't have a listing. I'm promoting the idea of an appointment. And so from a marketing perspective, if you send that email out, you will likely get 10, 15, 20 people replying because we're still in a low inventory market where homes are still selling fairly quickly. So you can now go into that listing presentation. Let's say this was a cold lead, not someone in your SOI that wasn't already pre-sold on you. You can go into that listing presentation and in your back pocket, you've got this fantastic marketing campaign that you just did that when you start talking about all the things you're going to do to market their home, you're going to say, oh, by the way, prior to even coming to your property, I did some you know, just some market research to see if we can get some interest in your home. And I've got 15 people already who are thinking about, who are interested in looking at your property. You're going to win that listing appointment every single time. But more importantly, you're going to create those conversations, which are going to lead to more customers for you and your team, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy, this is so good from a standpoint too. Um, you're just touching so many different areas. I mean, you're you're touching your database, your, your, your sphere of influence, you're yeah. giving them, letting you're, you're subconsciously, even if they're not interested in that house, you're letting them know you're hustling so that yep. people know it's Absolutely. the hustle. Yep. The second thing is, is you're letting people raise their hand and say, I am a buyer ready to buy if mm -hmm. I got the right property. And now you're also closing the deal before you even start with that yeah. potential thing. Yeah, this is so good. And that's the step that nobody, you know, we, we always talk about the pre-listing, you know, coming soon stuff, but this is a whole other level. So, all right, that's great. We're sitting in that listing point, but let's talk about what the next step is after that. Well, you just touched a little bit on the coming soon. I, so I think coming soon, you know, people, people always say to me, Jimmy, you know, clear cooperation only lets me promote a property for 24 hours before it hits the market. And, and they think that that's a bad thing. What an amazing opportunity. You've got something that you can promote 24 hours before anyone else has access to it. So, so what I would do, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, Jimmy, but I, I subscribe to every streaming service. I got mm -hmm. Amazon Prime. I got Netflix. I got HBO Max. I got a a Apple TV. I even got Peacock, right? Uh, in Discovery Plus, so I can watch B. Bobby Flay. So I've got everything. One of the things that one of the things that I like to do as a as a as a marketer is I always look for inspiration outside of the real estate industry. And so I was on HBO Max a few weeks ago, catching up on some shows. And in the navigation, and and if you're watching right now on the replay, you you can do this live in the navigation. If you click on the menu, you'll see all the standard stuff you typically see at a streaming site. You'll see that you know coming soon, you know uh, trending, you know what's new. You could sort by category but they have a specific category that is irresistible. And that category is called last chance. And when you click on that category, what you see is you see all of the movies that are now are no longer going to be available on HBO Max in the next sort of seven days. So, so you may not want to watch Deep Impact because it's not a great movie, but you got like three days to watch it before it falls off, off, of, off of the streaming service. And so I see this, I say, okay, what a fantastic subject line or angle that we could use when we're promoting a coming soon. So what I would do, and I would do this both, and I, we'll break this down, Jimmy. I, I would do this both as an email campaign. I would also do this as a, as a video, and I would also do this as one-to-one -to, -one to, to prospects in my database. I would say the subject line, instead of saying coming soon, which basically says, hey, we get this thing, but it's going to be available to everybody. I would say exclusivity ends in 24 hours. And then I turn around and say, I only have 24 hours to share this home with you before everyone else can access it on Zillow. For the location, price, and details, reply to this email. So, Jimmy, you can imagine, you can already see the Instagram reel video that we're doing. Hey, exclusivity ends in 24 hours. I got this fantastic home that's going to hit the market. It's in a great neighborhood. It's going to sell quickly. If you want to get more information about this property, send me a DM right now. Boom. Right. So, you and I are now start like as marketers whether it's email, whether it's texting, whether it's social, whether it's video, which I know something you're really passionate about, you can use a coming soon 
and that exclusivity ends hook as a means of starting more conversations, setting more appointments and working with more people. Yeah, Jimmy, the biggest worry I have right now is everybody's going to shut this off right now and just go do just that. <laughs> yes. It should be great. Um, but man, that is so, so smart and such a different angle from what mm -hmm. other people are doing. This is why I love talking with you from a standpoint of just literally we're taking something that everybody's doing or even yep. things that people are, that are looking at and saying, well, why have only got 24 hours? And you're turning that into one of the most uh, the best positive situations you could have to, again, have potential buyers raise their hand to also uh, market in a new way that's unique that everybody that sees it is like, wow, that was different. That was fresh. That's Jimmy's doing something a little different here. So mm -hmm. this is so, so smart. All right. Let's say that all of this. Now we're heading to the time when it is going to go live. What are some of the things that you're doing in that in that next step as well? Yeah, one one of my dear friends and great curator clients, uh, Joe Herrera and Taylor Prince out of Las Vegas, they yep. they do something really special. Shout out to Joe and Taylor. Uh, they've been running a strategy now for the better part of you know five six years, maybe even close to seven years. These guys will correct me in the comments here on Amen. Uh, what they do is they promote their new listings on Facebook. And they and I'll I'll break this down for you because this is something so unique and so special that has driven literally hundreds of millions of dollars in sales for them over the last couple of years. What they do is they promote the property and they don't give away the price, they don't give away the location. Instead, they include a gallery of photos and basically say, Hey, text us at this number and or send us a message if you want to get information about this property. Now, here's where it gets special. Most agents in the last two years would spend Jimmy maybe on average zero dollars advertising a listing. Why would you? It's going to sell quickly. So if you think about a listing as a paycheck and not an asset, you're not going to invest in that. You're just going to simply promote it and get it sold. Joe and Taylor, they spend up to a thousand dollars promoting a listing. Think about that. There, these these are not ten million dollar houses. These are five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar houses in Henderson. A thousand dollar budget just for Facebook sounds insane until you realize, and you go to the, and we'll hopefully include a link to their Facebook page. When you look at their Facebook page, you'll see these posts that have 200, 300 comments on the listing. They'll get 50, 70, 100 DMs from people and text messages from people. So when they when the way that I would use a listing is the exact same way that Joe and Taylor use a listing, which is use it, promote it, advertise it, grow your audience, get a bunch of comments, get a bunch of DMs, get a bunch of text messages to feed my growing real estate team. So two tips here. First, Facebook is not dead. In fact, I saw a stat recently that 40% of internet users, Jimmy, log into Facebook every single day. So I know everyone's hot on TikTok. Everyone's hot on Instagram. I'm telling you, Facebook is still, it is still the 800 pound gorilla. So the first thing is Facebook is not dead. Second thing is if you promote a listing and you're trying to get business from it, don't give away the address and don't give away the price because there's no reason for them to contact you. The third thing is, is spending a lot of money to start a lot of conversations is a fantastic strategy to help feed your team. You've got to put the budget behind it. Spending 50 bucks, spending 75 bucks, you might get a handful. When you start to increase that budget, man, that's when the magic really starts to happen. So I would be encouraging people to sort of get outside of their comfort zone, comfort zone a bit here and start to budget for these larger ad campaigns behind their listings. Yeah, and Jimmy, this is interesting. I want your opinion on this because I've, I've, I've been meaning to ask you about this anyway. What is your thought? If you're going to spend $1,000, should you spread this out? Like with listings now as quick as they're moving, should this be done on a one-day, two-day time? What is the ideal? Are you just going to try to flood the market or are you going to try to leak this out? What is your thoughts? Yeah, generally speaking, you're trying to, we both know that listings are going to move quickly. And I think one of the things that, I, I think one thing that I would do is so I would spend I would spread it over the course of seven days. Right. I would I I would I would I would sort of have an end in which we're going to review offers, uh, as opposed to accepting offers as they're coming in. Uh, you you can sort of if you if normally you got twenty if a home is going to hit the market and then you get offers in the twenty four hours and then you're reviewing that with your seller. If if that's your normal process, you're likely not going to get as much value out of this asset as you could. So right. I would be I would I would communicate that to the seller up front, which is we are going to build so much excitement, so much demand for your listing. By the time the time that seven days is over, we're going to have so many offers to review that's going to be clear and obvious which one's going to make the most sense for you, as opposed to 
like, Hey, we're going to list your home and then we'll see what happens. So I would, I would try to take advantage of that sort of first seven days. And just as a quick aside, preparing your sellers for the speed and velocity in which these deals move is so mission critical. Most sellers are just fundamentally not in the position to be able to make decisions so quickly. And we throw them as throw them in this world where like, Oh, you got to make a decision on whether you want to sell your house in 24 hours. Like that's a tough thing to do if you've owned the house for 12 years and then all of a sudden you got to decide you got to sell them in, in 12 hours. That's a tough thing to put on your seller. So I like the idea, Jimmy, of extending that runway just a bit, sort of spreading it out just a bit, giving everybody a little bit of time to breathe, and you're still going to get to the outcome that's going to be most beneficial to all parties involved. Hey, what's great about this too, Jimmy, is, is once you've done this, I mean, taking and, and showing a listing and saying, hey, look, here's what we do when we're launching this listing, for instance, is let me just show you the example of the last couple. Uh, you know, we're going to spend the money uh, to generate uh, a buzz that very few people can. And yeah. here's the results. And you just literally, it's the, you know, it's it's easy for them to, um, once they see it, it's a lot easier than you just saying it. Um, it's it's show and tell, you know, so yeah. I love yeah. That. Is something something you and I both believe, which is how you market your listings is how you get your next listing. So when we look at the Brad McCullums of the world, the Raj Gazars right. of the world, the Tim Smiths of the world, right? The Joe and Taylors of the world, they get come list me calls because people say, oh, I saw how you were promoting that person's listing. Could you do that for my house? And so how you market your li your current listings is how you get your next listing. Yeah, you mentioned Brad, um, just brilliant, um, you know, the way that he does everything with video as well as all of these steps that you're talking about. All right, so now here we are. We're in that promotion time period. We're leveraging these listings to have the opportunity to generate more. Where would we go from here? Well, before we get to the before we get to the, the last stage, which is sort of the, the just sold stage, right, or under contract right. just sold, we'll kind of bundle those together. One thing I want to call out. And I think this is a common thing I hear. And you tell me your reaction to this, Jimmy. A lot of agents I talk to, they don't send their new listings to their SOI, to their past clients, because they are they they say, quote, I don't want to annoy them. I don't want to bug them. Well, the thought that goes to my mind is, so uh, in, in the book that I co-wrote, exactly what to say for real estate agents. Right. Uh, you know, if you go to Amazon, so I got, I got a gripe right now. So I'll use this as an opportunity to complain because I yeah. complain about this all the time. If you go to, it, most people don't know this, but if you go to Amazon, you look at exactly what to say for real estate agents, you'll see my co-authors. You'll see Phil M. Jones, you'll see Chris Smith, and then you'll see a, a link that says the word more. When you click more, my name gets exposed, <laughs> but right. So, so when, when we co-wrote the book, we had, we had this, this line that I think is so applicable, this magic word, so applicable which is the line, who do you know? So if I were to put on a new listing that I have and I wanted to market it specifically to my SOI, I might say, hey, Jimmy, I got this new listing that hit the market on 123 Main Street. It's a great property. I know that you're not in the market to buy right now, but who do you know who might be thinking about making a move? And I would send this, to be clear, I would pick up the phone and call them and, and or I would text them because now all of a sudden, they get to, they get to be the, the have the superpower. They've got some inside information, and they can call their friend and say, hey, "My my my agent just let me know about this new listing that hit the market, and uh, I know you're thinking about making a move." So they get to look like the the good guy in this scenario. They look good. You build the connection. You get a referral. You have a conversation. And even if that property is not the property is right for them, now all of a sudden you got a referral. So I love the idea of the blocking and tackling of picking up the phone, kind of going through my SOI, making that call. Say, hey, hey, Jimmy, I know you're not looking for a property right now, but I got this great home that's about to hit the market. Who do you know who might be in the market? Boom. And so I would be using, instead of like the blasts and the, and the mass campaigns, that's for your stranger. That's for your database. That's for your internet leads. I would use the one-to-one -one stuff for the SOI as a way to take a listing and kind of turn it into a referral opportunity. Yeah. And even if they don't know someone about this house, all of a sudden now you're top of mind and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you've given them an opportunity. Um, yep. and there, then you just start kicking in all of the things that we're going to be working on as far as staying top of mind and being able to be top of mind when they have that opportunity. So, oh man, that's so good. Um, Jimmy, this is really, that's next level. And again, this is why I like having smarter people than me around me um, is because mm -hmm. I've never even thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely next level of the thing that most people don't do. So really good yeah. stuff there. All right, let's well, move on to the next step. Yeah, let's keep let's keep building on it, which is okay. um, just sold. So 
you know, you and I, listen, I think we're all guilty of doing some bad marketing in our lives. Uh, if you go back and watch some of my earlier videos, I used to wear, I used to wear uh, glasses. I used to wear glasses, right. To make my, to make myself look older until someone at a conference came up to me and shows you remind me of a celebrity. And I was thinking, I was excited. I'm like, Oh, you know, who's she going to say? She goes, you remind me of Rachel Maddow. And I said, okay, I got to lose the glasses. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> But one of the things that I, was, I, I, I didn't want to say it, but I was, you know, I thought, you know, no, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I grew the beard too. I'm like, there's no way, yeah, no, no way, way. someone could yeah. look like Rachel Maddow, but we both have that slick back hair. So, <laughs> um, so the, the, the thing that I love about, uh, marketing a home that sells is that we've seen this in our career over and over again, where people hold the just sold sign up, right? The client gets in front of the house, they hold just, sign, just, just the just sold sign up. We've all, we've all done some bad marketing where the consumer's holding the just sold sign. And, and listen, I've seen hostages who are like hold up the newspaper as proof of life, who are happier than some of your sellers who are holding up that just sold sign. So I want us to evolve away from just sold, above asking, all that. I want us to provide more of a storytelling approach. So let me give you an example of something that I would do. Uh, if I were, if I just sold a property, I might write an email campaign or write a blog post or shoot a video that says, why did one, two, three Main Street sell so quickly? Or uh, the real story behind how we sold one, two, three Main Street. Or one, two, three Main Street just sold, here are three reasons why you should care. And in every instance, what I'm going to do here, instead of trying to make myself look good, I'm going to give them the behind the scenes look at how we actually got this deal done. All the messy details that people don't see that sort of highlights and, and shows the value of having a professional realtor represent you, such as we got 12 offers and the one that my clients accepted fell through. So we had to salvage the deal by basically going out and finding the other three, like you make know, like all the things that you deal with all the time, like navigating a nasty inspection, appraisal coming in short, someone backing out of an offer. Like this is an opportunity to show your value because if everyone thinks selling a house is easy, which it, which in some instances, maybe in the past it has been. If you could show them that no, there's actually some real landmines that that can you you want to avoid, and a pro can help you do that. You can increase the perceived value you have and justify your existence in this process. So what I would do, just and we'll talk about some some other channels you can use. But what I would do from a just sold perspective is tell the story, tell the behind the scenes story of how you got the deal done. Give them information about that listing they can't find online and kind of demonstrate the process as a means of helping them understand why you're really good at what you do without saying, hey, seller, could you hold this sold sign up and show everyone how good I am at what I do? Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, this is uh, this is great. And and again, let's let's talk about some of the distribution. I think that's a great um, segue as far as some of these. Obviously, are you just shotgunning this everywhere or are you utilizing specific uh, places for specific types of, you know, whether it's video, whether it's, you know, the picture posts, like you talked about yeah. Facebook, some yeah. of this article writing, anything in particular? I, I would, uh, first and foremost, you and I both believe this, Jimmy, you know, if you don't have a video strategy, you don't have a marketing strategy. So I right. think all, I think that my advice for everyone who's watching right now would be simple. First and foremost is to write the story out and create that sort of artifact that can live on your website. That's sort of like, I wouldn't even call it a success story. I would just call it a story that can live on your website. The process of writing this thing out is going to give you the inspiration you need for the email campaign that I want you to send and for the video that I want you to shoot. So I would start by like documenting this story to have a permanent place on your website where that exists. Now we got to get, we, we're not just going to share this blog. Say, Hey, I wrote a new blog about one, two, you know, this home I just sold. No, no, take the blog you wrote and use it as that sort of script you would use to tell the entire story via Instagram, via TikTok, via YouTube shorts. If it's, if you've got a customer that you can interview, that can become a longer form video you can upload on your YouTube channel as an example. And of course, you know, anyone who follows me knows I, I, I absolutely love email marketing. Email marketing is one of the, the best channels to use yet ever. Everyone just drips on people. No, use and use your email list as a means of distributing this content uh, outside. So high level, create an artifact on your website that can be there permanently. And then the process of doing so will give you the video script you need for social media. And the process of doing so will give you that email campaign that you can use to, to send it out to your database and SOI. Jimmy, what we've just talked about, literally, if people would follow this strategy, um, there's no doubt 
that they're going to generate more listings from those from that one listing. You know, when I first started this business, I had somebody that told me, you know, hey, listen, every listing ought to generate an additional two transactions. Mm -hmm. I think now um, that every listing should generate five transactions because mm -hmm. we've got a longer spin. And here's the thing what you're talking about, whether it be the video, the blog post, those things, those have a tail um, as far as they will be able to be utilizing your marketing into the future that we've yeah. never had before. That mm -hmm. video could be seen three years from now, um, and, exactly. and you've got an opportunity for it to compound what's going forward. So um, the time as far as what an amazing time to be in real estate, if you'll mm -hmm. simply apply some of these strategies, especially the stuff that you guys are doing a curator um, to help agents just position themselves to be that professional in their local market. Um, anything else you want to add to this before I wrap us up? Yeah, so so two more, two more quick ideas for you. Right, we, mentioned, we, mentioned, yeah. we mentioned distribution. So- Everything I've learned about direct mail, I've learned from Jimmy Burgess, right? Following him, watching his YouTube videos, <laughs> picking his brain. So I, 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 I'm a, I don't know, I don't know if you know this, Jimmy. I'm a millennial, right? 37 years old. Yeah. They, they now, they now classify me as a geriatric millennial. I'm not sure why, but they, that's what they call me now. Uh, so it might be the Gen, the Gen Zers that did that to us. But I, I'm a digital native, you know. So all of my experience as an ad guy has been on social media, on paid search, on retargeting, on email marketing has been digital. In the last few years, I've started to get, I've started to have a deeper appreciation for using traditional channels. One of those channels is direct mail. And so one of the things that I love is using out-of-the-box ideas and out-of-the-box strategies for direct mail. So one campaign that we have seen just great success with is Yellow Letters. So the, there's a guy in Wisconsin who runs a company called Yellow Letters Complete, yellowlettersComplete.com. Shout out to my guy, David. Uh, he's got an army of robots that create, you know, marketing campaigns for real estate agents and other other industries. But the great thing about a yellow letter is it comes in what like what feels like a wedding invitation. And when you open it up, it's a handwritten letter with, and this is the key, there's a sticky note that's slapped right on top of it that someone in Wisconsin wrote your call to action on. And I and we send these when we we sent these in the past when we when a client has sold a property. Now I'll take that exact same strategy, the storytelling angle, and I'll just adapt it for a direct mail campaign. And then I'll layer in the yellow letter strategy as a means of sort of standing out. Postcards oftentimes can be very effective, but they also have a tendency to sort of blend in because we're all using the same design templates. This is something that fundamentally sort of stands out in the mailbox. And we have generated, with no exaggeration, tens of millions of dollars in listings from this one simple technique. So the first thing is, you know, hitting social media, hitting your email, getting your website, check, check, check. But take a little bit of that commission you just got on that sale and then reinvest that. Again, a listing is an asset, a buyer is a paycheck. Reinvest that back into promoting all the, you know, promoting the story to all the people who live in that nearby area. Now, Jimmy, let's 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 imagine for a moment the people who are listening right now are high achievers. They are not the people who complain about bandwidth. They're not the people who complain about the market. These are people who are listening to us right now and, and they want to they want to turn the volume up to 10. Here's how you do that. I would say if you can marry that direct mail campaign with a circle prospecting strategy, now you're starting to cook with gas, right? So Jimmy, if I were to call around that area, and this is this is my guy, Tom Ferry's script. I learned this from him and I love this script. So shout out to my guy, Tom Ferry. Tom Ferry said, okay, th this is how I would, I would circle prospect. It would be, hey, Jimmy, uh, this is or this is Jimmy Collin with ABC Realty. Uh, I'm not sure if you know that 123 Main Street recently just sold. Any time, say, the reason I'm reaching out is any time a home sells in your neighborhood, two or three people start thinking about selling. Who do you know who might be in the market? And so a simple script where you're giving them an update on what's happening. Hey, this home just sold. The reason, I, the reason I'm reaching out is because anytime this happens, two or three people start thinking about selling. And instead of asking, do you want to sell your house? Which is like, and it, that's, a, that's a pretty fastball question for someone you don't know. You're pivoting towards a softer, easier to answer question that can lead to a better conversation, which is who do you know who might be thinking about you know, putting their home on the market? That is what I would do when it comes to 
using my sales to get my next listing. Send that direct mail postcard using yellow letters complete and then have my team pick up the phone and start making calls. That's when the rubber really hits the road. And that's when you can turn this thing up to a level, a level 15, my friend. Yeah. And Jimmy, you know, the beauty of the, the time that we live in as well is this, and I cut my teeth where I was making all those calls. Uh, yeah. The agent that's out there is like, look, I really want to scale this thing. I don't have the time or I don't have the desire to pick up the phone and do that. Um, this is where an ISA and especially like your program, I mean, obviously with the track, I mean, having that ability, you know, where you've got people that that's all they do. Um, they're yeah. professionals to that. That's always an option um, that is there as well. I know, listen, in the, in the show notes, we'll, I don't know if you want to expand on that, but I'll, I'll make sure that we've got some contact information and some links for that uh, down below as well in the, in the video description. Um, but um, also, let me ask you one other thing. Um, when we're way. talking about the call to action on the on the sticky note, for instance, what are some examples of those that people can utilize once they go up there and they apply uh, yellowlettersComplete.com to uh, their strategy? Well, one one of the things that I I have been found to be so effective. So we're all familiar with if you want to get your home's value, call us here. If you want to sell your property, call us here. If you want to, if you want to, you know, get an updated report on how much equity you have, give us a call here. One of the things that I have found to be a great call to action, and it really I think represents the moment that we're in today. That's not necessarily or wasn't necessarily true a couple of years ago, which is the rent versus sell call to action. So if you are a homeowner and you have a 3% interest rate, and you, let's say, by the way, Jimmy, you know this, 42% uh, of homeowners right now have owned their property free and clear. Most people have a lot of equity in their property. So they may not have to actually sell their home. They could in theory, and this is the question they're asking themselves, do I just take, and take a line of credit out on my, on my home right now to use for the purchase of my next home and just rent this thing out because maybe the economics work. Now, if you can use that question that consumers are asking themselves, should I, should I rent this thing out or should I sell it? If you use that as a call to action, you can start a conversation with a seller that is a lot more relevant to them in their current situation. So I like the rent versus sell analysis as an offer. Now, what they're going to realize is that being a landlord is not like HGTV. It, you know, you got to, you got the investment you got to make in the property, you know, having vacancy issues, having to go fix things at the most inconvenient times. And they'll, they'll appreciate that as they begin to understand it. And they'll likely end up doing what most people do, which is sell their property. But you can be one of the few agents in your market who's actually having that conversation with the seller versus what most agents are doing, which is in this case is saying, oh, like, like, yeah, let's get your home in the market. Let's sell that property. Let's get you the, the best price for it. That's not the conversation they're having at the kitchen table with their spouse. They're trying to explore all of their options. So I would lean into the traditional ones, what, you know, find out what your home's worth. If you want to sell, give us a call. But I would experiment with adding that sort of rent versus sell analysis as an offer to engage sellers in a meaningful way. Yeah. Jimmy Mackin brings the heat. Curator brings the heat. Um, you know, this is uh, this is one of those, Jimmy, that if somebody watches this and they don't take action on this, um, uh, you know, listen, what are you doing in this business? This is exactly what I love about being around you is, is that every single time um, that I hear you speak, you bring so much actionable ideas. Um, and then with Curator, you know, all of the things that you guys offer. I mean, I, I love the I love the postcard library. I love the setting everything up where literally all it's just plug and play as far as having a content calendar that is applicable specifically for agents in their market. Mm -hmm. um, just everything you guys are doing is uh, just above and beyond. And just thank you, man, on, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for what you're doing for the industry because what you're doing is, is you're helping people that are serious about being professional be more mm -hmm. professional and serve their clients better. So anything you yeah. want to add as we wrap this up? Well, just at, at, a, at a high level, I think, first off, thank you for the kind words. And, uh, and you know, you and, I, you, you and I are trying to spread the gospel, my friend. Uh, yes. There. there this this is a hard business, you know. Something I've learned being being so intimate in this business, like this is a hard business, and I have I have so much respect for agents who have been building their business for 15, 20 years, uh, who have who have gone out there and done the work. Uh, and I want to I want to help as many of the people who are watching, and certainly in my community, in my network. I want I want to help them not only survive this this transition market, but I want them to thrive. And what you're what I hope you'll take away from today's session is I think you'll you'll start to see that. If you can make these small changes, right? If you do it one time, you're going to get a pop. But if you can start to make these small changes and you can operationalize it where it becomes consistent, it becomes the new SOP within your business. 
all of a sudden you can start to build some momentum in the business. So while everyone else is out there kind of scrambling, you know, being reactive, you've got a plan, you've got a strategy. And I think in the past, Jimmy, especially in the last two years, all you had to do is work hard and you would have done well. In this market, you have to work hard and you have to work smart. And I think what we want to empower agents to do is to have that second component, have a smart strategy that can help them drive results. And if you want to stay connected with me, you know, hopefully we'll include it in the in the in the show. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Jimmy Mackin, always sharing ideas, always sharing strategies, and always ha always happy to give back to my Inman community. I cut my teeth in this industry writing for Inman many many years ago. Um, I love this organization. I love what this this brand stands for, and I'm always happy to give back. Yeah, Jimmy, um, I would encourage everybody to follow you on Instagram. Literally, when you pop up, I know that there's going to be some good information there. So thank you, my friend, for everything, um, everything. And uh, listen, I hope you guys got some value out of this. Follow Jimmy. Uh, check out Curator. Couldn't recommend anybody any higher. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful, and I'll talk to you soon.